$503 million. That's how much Patrick Mahomes signed for in the summer of 2020. That huge number is because Mahomes can bend footballs through space and time. He won both the MVP and Super Bowl MVP awards before turning 25. And his agent is Lee Steinberg, the real-life inspiration for Jerry Maguire. Mahomes was certainly shown the money, but in the NFL, players rarely get all of that money. Unlike in other leagues, NFL contracts are almost never fully guaranteed. And understanding the salary cap is like trying to nail smoke to a wall. Mahomes' $503 million figure over 12 years? That's actually $477 million over 12 years. Or is it $450 million over 10 years? Maybe it's $183 million over 6 years? Or just $140 million guaranteed for injury? Why is it so hard to answer a simple question like, how much money does Patrick Mahomes make? Well, that's because we first have to answer a different question. How do NFL contracts actually work? They say that time equals money. In Major League Baseball or the National Basketball Association, that is mostly true. If you sign a three-year deal for $5 million, you're probably gonna get paid $5 million over three years. But that is not how it works in the NFL. Not even close. NFL contracts are, well... It's all a fugazi, you know what a fugazi is? In football, the time listed on contracts is not real. As Andrew Brandt, the former chief negotiator for the Green Bay Packers, told The Ringer in 2019, the contracts become suggestions after the first year. The number of years doesn't really matter. If the time isn't real, then the money isn't real either. And with that, the NFL salary cap starts to look a lot like the code from Pirates of the Caribbean. The code is more what you call guidelines than actual rules. According to a ringer analysis of free agent contracts signed from 2011 through 2015, NFL players who signed five-year contracts were more likely to be released after one season than they were to play all five years. And players who signed three-year contracts in free agency were three times more likely to be released than to finish the deal. On average, free agents are rostered for just three-fifths of the years they signed for and only get 64% of their quote-unquote total money. So why does it work this way? Well, it's always worked this way. Teams don't have a reason to offer fully guaranteed contracts because it's virtually never been done. And why would they change the status quo? From a front office standpoint, it's a no-brainer. If a player is bad, you cut them for cheap, and if the player is good, you have them at a controlled cost. Players have to accept the system because they don't have much negotiating power. While the league's biggest names carry some sway, everyone else is extremely replaceable. There is no shortage of qualified players waiting to play in the NFL, and the competition to be on a roster is unbelievably fierce. This is how Raiders head coach John Gruden described making it in the NFL to his players in 2019. You gotta end somebody's dream. You gotta take their job, you gotta take their heart. Players are reminded that their jobs could be taken from them every single day. They also know that one injury could permanently alter their future and their future earnings. So when a franchise is offering them a pile of money, it's hard to say no, even if they know the team could pull the money away like Lucy with a football. And teams are really good at pulling the money away. Here's how they do it. NFL players get paid in two ways, bonuses and salaries. And those payments come in two forms, guaranteed money and non-guaranteed money. Let's start with what's guaranteed. After landing a new deal, the first bit of money players get is a signing bonus. That number is agreed upon in negotiations and is paid out immediately. Then comes the salary. Some of that is guaranteed, usually at least the first year or two, and is sent out in checks just like how regular people get paid, only the numbers are much, much bigger. But at some point during the contract, the money starts falling into the non-guaranteed buckets. Non-guaranteed means that while the payments are scheduled, the player can be let go at any point and stops getting paid. So in other words, these deals begin as contracts, but essentially become at-will employment agreements about halfway through. The team has plenty of off-ramps to escape deals that become cumbersome. And if they take one, the money owed to the player becomes, well, fairy dust. The amazing part is that this system applies to even the best NFL players. Sure, if you're good, you might get your second year money guaranteed. And if you're great, 
like Aaron Rodgers or Aaron Donald, you can get your third year money guaranteed too. But even Aaron Rodgers and Aaron Donald can't get anything guaranteed beyond year three, leaving massive portions of their contracts up in the air. And it's important to remember that most players are not Aaron Rodgers or Aaron Donald. Rodgers and Donald represent the 1% of the 1% of the NFL's earners. Most of the players who suit up on Sundays are not making millions of dollars. Whether it is undrafted players who fill out the end of rosters, or young guys who are on controlled rookie contracts, or veterans trying to hang on to their careers, teams are constantly looking for cheaper options to fill out their rosters. And as a result, they're coming up with more and more creative ways to stop paying players. And players don't have a ton of options at their disposal to fight this system. The best leverage a player can have is being a quarterback, especially a quarterback who wins the Super Bowl. When Joe Flacco led the Ravens to a Super Bowl in the 2012-13 season, he got a $120 million extension, one that he maybe didn't deserve and definitely didn't live up to. Yeah, it's tough. The next best leverage a player can have is making free agency. Unlike in the NBA, reaching free agency in the NFL is hard. Teams have the franchise tag at their disposal, which essentially forces the player into a one-year deal to keep them with the team. And more often than not, players sign extensions or get traded before they hit the open market. And on the rare occasion that good players do become free agents, they get more chances to push back. They can sign one-year deals, which offer more money per year, but at the risk of potentially getting hurt and losing long-term value. Or free agents can negotiate with multiple teams and hope that one gives them a better deal. He told me to quote unquote, go get that money. The best recent example of NFL player leverage is when Kirk Cousins signed his contract with the Minnesota Vikings in March, 2018. His three-year $84 million deal was fully guaranteed. And it was a big deal at the time, literally and figuratively. Cousins got three seasons and a hefty salary to boot, but the move was not remarkable because of the money or the money being fully guaranteed. It was remarkable because Kirk Cousins got the money without any portion of it going into those non-guaranteed buckets. Usually teams would never allow three years of guaranteed money without at least two years of non-guaranteed tacked onto the end of it. But Kirk Cousins got his deal because he had leverage. He reached free agency and actually had competing offers. What a concept. And he played those offers against one another until the non-guaranteed years were gone. That deal was a massive success for Kirk Cousins and an exciting step for players to see that fully guaranteed contracts are even possible. But nobody, nobody has been able to get the fourth year of their contract guaranteed in the NFL. And that's where Patrick Mahomes comes in. Mahomes' deal has something called guarantee mechanisms, which is a relatively new phrase, but it acts as a counter to the system of guaranteed and non-guaranteed years. This structure is more than a dozen years old, but nobody has taken it as far as Mahomes. Mahomes' payouts are not guaranteed, yet. Like everyone else, Mahomes really got only three years of his deal locked in, but his agent added a catch. Every year, Mahomes is on the Kansas City roster. His salary for the following season locks into place. In other words, his salaries change buckets each season, with the non-guaranteed money becoming guaranteed. This is called a rolling guarantee. So if Mahomes is still on the Chiefs in March 2023, his salary for the 2024 season becomes guaranteed. And if he is on the team in March 2024, his salary for 2025 becomes guaranteed. And the same thing happens the next year and the next year and the next year, all the way until 2031, when the land is expected to be overtaken by the sea and Mahomes will own beachfront property in Kansas City. Guaranteeing a chunk of the deal every year for a decade is not the same as guaranteeing Mahomes' entire deal at the time of signing. But it provides Mahomes with a lot of protection. Mahomes would have to be in such a bad situation, either due to injury or the Monstars stealing his talent, that Kansas City would be willing to pay him more than $40 million to just go away. Mahomes and his agent didn't invent this mechanism. Players like Aaron Donald and Carson Wentz have similar clauses in their contracts, but the difference is that they only have it for two or three years. Mahomes has it for a decade. Obviously, this is good for Mahomes, no kidding. But perhaps the most amazing part about Mahomes' contract is it's also a good deal for the Chiefs. That may sound ridiculous, but locking Mahomes down for a decade at a stable price is like being able to buy Amazon stock at the price it is now every year for the next 10 years. You don't know for sure what it's gonna happen, but there is a really good chance it's going to be profitable. And the Chiefs can feel 
extra confident because the NFL salary cap runs on inflation. The NFL has a goal of hitting $25 billion a year in revenue by 2027, and they are on their way to doing it. But to keep internal costs down and avoid paying players market value, the league negotiates with the Players Association to create the salary cap, a figure that's determined by taking roughly 48% of the NFL's revenue, or about half, and they earmark it for player salaries divided by 32 teams. And since the cap is based on how much money the league brings in, and that figure is going up, the cap is going to go up too. The number more than doubled over the last 15 years, going from $86 million per team in 2005 to almost $200 million per team in 2020. And while the salary cap is expected to drop in 2021 as a result of decreased revenue during the pandemic, 10 years from now, the NFL salary cap could be closer to $300 million per team. So the Chiefs getting Mahomes at $40 million a year sounds like a lot, but by the end of the deal, he could actually become underpaid, at least compared to other quarterbacks. In fact, Mahomes is already making less money than you think. $40 million per year is an average, but he is not making anywhere close to that yet. From 2020 to 2022, Mahomes is making just $63 million total, the same amount as Teddy Bridgewater. That's because Mahomes' 10-year extension doesn't kick in for two more years. Mahomes won't make more than $29 million in a single year until 2023, when he begins raking in about $40 million annually. Why did he agree to that, though? Well, Mahomes backloaded the deal so that the Chiefs could pay other contributors like tight end Travis Kelsey and defensive tackle Chris Jones to stick around. When Mahomes signed his contract, he texted Chris Jones, maybe the real MVP of their Super Bowl win, and he said, I left some money on the table. Mahomes' deal was less about maximizing his wealth than it was maximizing Kansas City's Super Bowl window. So much accounting nonsense went on with this $500 million deal that it increased Mahomes' 2020 cap hit by just $30,000. Again, the cap is just guidelines. And for all the talk about the deal being worth $503 million, which is closer to $477 million without the incentives, the real number is probably nowhere near that. Mahomes is due $60 million in 2027, but odds are that's just a mile marker for the two sides to renegotiate his contract around 2025, when he turns 29 years old. That means when this is all said and done, Mahomes might have really just signed a six-year deal for $183 million, marginally more than what Jared Goff signed for in 2019. But Mahomes won't be crying poor. By the time he renegotiates in 2027, he might be asking for somewhere around $50 million annually. It's important to remember to put all this in perspective. Whenever money comes up in football discussions, just know that the dollars don't always make sense. 503 million could actually be 183 million. And for the people that are not Patrick Mahomes, AKA the other 99.9% .9 of the league, it's far less than that. The money on NFL contracts is not real. The time is not real. Mahomes' deal is about as real and spectacular as we've seen, even if everyone else's deal is, well, mm -hmm. 